Open live. All right, everybody. All right. We're going live here. So usually I record, edit, do all that fun stuff. But here's a live broadcast. Most of us are sort of stuck at home with this coronavirus scare. And for the most part, that's very important to do. Take care of yourself. I'm in a high-risk category. I got extreme pulmonary issues, kidney, or uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, kidney uh, disease, and my age, and my immune system's down. So this gives me a little bit of time to uh, talk to you. Today we're going to talk about um, tackle box and how I've organized my tackle box. And uh, maybe it'll give you some ideas to do yours. I'm going to make a few more of these. And, and then I'm also going to do some stuff out on the lake. Uh, what's the best way to quarantine yourself? Get on your boat. Put yourself out in the middle of the lake. And nobody's near you. <laughs> so um, my respiratory issues. No, I don't have the virus. And I hope not to get it. But this is just the way I talk now. So uh, let's, oh, for instance, I've got this bag right here. I got from uh, uh, Walmart, big bag. It's reconditioned. And I got it for 15 bucks. And it holds a lot. So I am going to, we're going to go through, uh, put this down on the floor. Mm -hmm. And pull up a Plano box. Now I've divided up my Plano boxes by the way I fish. So I do have a trout box, bass, bass box, and all that other fun stuff. This right here is my uh, my trout box. That's my trout box. In here you'll find my soft uh, plastics. I've got. Uh, my spinners and spoons. Uh, I've got some shallow bait that seems to work pretty good for my trout in my local area. And you'll see small little jerk baits. These are really light, very small. And uh, trout seems to go for them. I also put my crappie um, stuff in here too. So uh, what usually works for trout can also work for crappie. Um, they seem to sort of like, you know, like each other's food. Um, now, some of my favorite things to use for trout, they like shiny stuff. So, I would recommend having a variety of, ah, no, they fall apart, variety of spoons. And uh, if you, you really can't go wrong with spoons. Um, the, you know, they, they shimmer in the water and it catches their attention. Rooster tails. Yeah, this is what happens when you put them all in one spot. A rooster tail with a spinner. They love it. So these things, and this is called a mice tail. Trout love this. Mice tails work really, really, really well. And you'll find, you know, I have bugs, plastic bugs. All this is in my trout box and then with my crappie stuff. So over here, ah, there you go. Yeah, we'll do that. Ah, perfect. Now, typically a crappie would love this. Put a little um, nibbits, you know, cra crappie nibs on it. Oh, let me get those. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. There you go. Okay. This is a power bait. Crappie nibbies. There you go. Put some of these on your hook. They're scented, and uh, these work really, really well. So I put those actually on, you know, I put two, typically, on my uh, crappie uh, jig and send it away. Typically, I have a bobber on my crappie jigs, depending on where I see them. All right, next. Next is my, um, my, um, what do you call it? 
a uh, terminal tackle stuff. There, let me get to look at that. All right, this is my terminal tackle stuff. Uh, there we go. Got my knife. These right here. These, by the way, this, that right there, it's called a bobber stopper. They come in three different sizes. Bobber stoppers are awesome. Basically, you just slide them on your line. Oh, sorry for all the shaking. I shake a lot. Uh, put you down. All right. Anyway, you put them on your line. You can adjust for like drop rigging, uh, your bobber, whatever. Um, your adjust your depths. Really easy. They come in three different sizes. Uh, you can go to Wish, dot, you know, and, and use that app. You can get 120 for a few bucks. I mean, they're really cheap. They work great. And small ones for very light line, basically trout stuff. Medium, you can use for braided line, medium, um, so 15-pound line, which is what I like using. And they got a heavier one for the heavier lines, 25 pounds or so. But you can go ahead and use that. Um, I have a variety of little tools that are in here, my um, knives, my different types of um, weights, my swivels, by the way. Pay extra money for good swivels. Don't go to Walmart and buy the cheap stuff. They'll just open up on you and you lose a perfectly good bait. You know, hard bait. I mean, they're convenient. They're cheap. But after you lose a couple hard baits, they ain't worth it. All right. One of my favorite boxes. This, you guys know I love Six Cents. This is a Six Cents cornucopia of heaven. Um, this is my bass box. Ah, you see those big babies right there? It's my deep divers. Those will go down to 25, 30 feet. And then I, I, I change them up by diving. And so you can see my crank bait, lipless crankbaits over here. Oh, where, where is it? Right here. There's my lipless crankbaits. Uh, this time of year, kind of used with craw. You, you want to use red. You want really, something really cool looking. I also put, you know, my shallow divers in their own little pocket. If you actually divide them up this way and your fish finder shows you, um, you know, what love, what depth your, fit, your fish are at, you, can, you know exactly where to go in your tackle box. And you can get a diver that goes down to it. Uh, my shallow divers, my, my square bills and, and things like that, fantastic this time of year. It's starting to warm up. And they're starting to come to the surface. And uh, we were out a couple days ago, and most of the fish we saw was anywhere from four to six feet. And so they weren't deep. The previous time we were out, they were on the, on the, on the, the floor of the lake. And anywhere, all the way down to 90 feet. And we were getting some incredible reeds. And we had to go and use drop shots. We had to use, uh, I used, uh, we used jigs, and we used... Um, uh, lipless creeks in order to let them sink to the bottom but this right here just this box just this box and everything in it is, you know, worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars um, this is a fantastic here I should be getting my uh, my current um, my current uh, uh, six cents is coming uh, pretty soon for this month and I'm always excited to get that. And then you've got your soft bait box. So this is my soft baits and jigs, you know, for things. So you can see a, a variety of soft baits in there. And uh, I also put my uh, weedless jigs, which technically aren't real weedless because we lose them. <laughs> so I mean, they don't pull them that hard. Next time we're taking a magnet out. If you've never gone magnet fishing, do it. But in, in this box, I've got a variety of prepared rigs. Um, there's a bluefish looking one. And, uh, you know, my uh, weedless jigs, football jigs, things like that. And uh, different sizes and different colors of my, my soft plastics, too. All this... And they had a place to put some bobbers. I don't know where else to put the bobbers. But these these come in all you know all sizes, and 
colors. So you can have a soft bait, a trout box, a bass box, terminal tackle box. Those are my boxes. Now, as for my other stuff that I have in here, I always keep of really close reader glasses. They're very important because I'm going blind in my old age. And, and of course, you've got to have your power bait jars. I already showed you one. Ah, Jimmy. It's way down there. It's farther away from the mic. All right. So, in, a, in, this, in this one bag holds all this stuff. Yeah, I already saw my crap, crappy nibs. And I've got a variety of power baits. You know, again, this is more power baits, trout nuggets. And really, if you're going to shoot fish for trout, always, always have salmon eggs. It's real important. Salmon eggs have always been around. They worked back at the turn of the century, the other century, and they still work today. Yeah, this has got oh, more trout nuggets. Different colors. So, and then in my pockets, not my pockets, it's pockets. I think it's real important, and I recommend you get this. This is called um, Spike It. The stuff, you just di dip it in there, your soft bait, and it gives it a really big glow. Um, this one, obviously, is chartreuse. And then I have two different ones. And I've got this one, this oh, pink or something. Yeah, pink. And it gives a really strong a garlic scent. So just dip it in there, you know, for a couple seconds. Pull it out. Let it dry for about, you know, 30 seconds. Then cast it out. Um, it's really neat because you can change the color of... Um, of your bait or just a piece of the bait you can change its color you can add in a really good attractive scent with it um, and then of course in another pocket because this is real important in another pocket you gotta have put this on here gotta have your pliers and then yeah this is my fishing knife so it's just an old buck knife, but I got this back in 1982. It was a high school graduation gift. I am that old. And uh, it's got uh, my brother-in-law's father, who's who died many, many years ago. He made a custom sheath. This right here. And the sheath goes right on. The neat thing about the sheath, it's got a little area to put the tip that's plastic. Put it in there. And this is on my belt. And so now all I do is pull it and pull it out. And now I've got an extended knife. Got a fish in one hand, whatever I need. Um, anyway, fantastic. This is a, you know, Bob wanted to sell these, but he never did. Uh, I'm not sure why, but what a fantastic sheath. I've had it. I've had it since like, I had the knife, you know, so... Um, so it's 1982. So I put those in another pocket. And then in order for you to, my side pocket, side pocket, I have a stringer. And I've got extra line. Uh, uh, so I can go ahead and create lead, leaders and things like that um, for... Uh, when I'm when I'm doing trout, I can still use my braided line, but I can also cast out there with a three foot leader, a very light monofilament line, and still be able to use my favorite setup. Uh, so that's something I put in the other pocket. So anyway, if <laughs> organizing things is real important when you're out on the water. Because uh, 
you don't have time to sort through a bunch of stuff. The more organized you are, the more likely you're going to get that line back out there. Now, I don't, you know, we have a half a dozen polls, uh, but I only have typically two poles with me, a spinning setup and a casting setup. And uh, if I want to switch them, um, I need to be able to go to my tackle box, pull out the right box, know where my terminal tackle is, know what type of species I'm, I'm fishing for and how deep it is. All that is divided up into my tackle boxes. Plano boxes, you know, these things, are, these things are not cheap. These are not expensive. Rick Bass Pro Shops, this is a small one. The big ones were like $5.99 at Bass Pro Shops. Uh, you get them online. You get them for like three for so much or whatever. That is all really, really good. Um, but anyway, I hope this sort of helps you a little bit. I'm going to do uh, another video on our, our live well. And uh, so you'll laugh about it. I don't know. Mike, you've got a live well? Yeah. When you're terrible at fishing, you got to be optimistic. And even put the small ones in there now. Uh, I'll give you some pointers on that, you know, and, and the laws and stuff like that by state. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you a little bit. You know, 15 bucks for the bag over at Walmart. Buy some Play-Doh boxes online or wherever and divide it up um, by species and by depth and put your terminal tackle in its own box. And uh, you would be surprised how much time this saves you uh, when you're out on the water. So anyway, enjoyed it. And thank you for subscribing to Terrible at Fishing. If you're not a subscriber, go just, you know, hit like and hit uh, subscribe right down there. I'll be doing some more. Um, again, we're kind of all either stuck at home or on the lake. You know, rather be on the lake. But it's been raining a lot lately here in Southern California. Uh, I'll be doing some fishing later this month uh, in, uh, I think it's next week. I think it's coming up next week. Uh, I'll be up at uh, Lake Tahoe. I'll be doing some videos up there as we drive up to Klamath uh, Falls, Oregon. And we'll be doing some fishing in Klamath Lake and Klamath River. Um, so we're doing quite a little, um, little fishing trip. And also, we're going to look at some houses up at Klamath Falls, Oregon. And uh, I think it's time to get out of California. Born and raised here, I know. Uh, but uh, these people are crazy. I went to the grocery store today. These people are nuts. I mean, the pasta aisles, like pasta again, ain't no pasta in the pasta aisle. And ain't no beans anywhere. Ain't no bread nowhere. They're rationing out milk, one milk, one gallon of milk, one bottle of water, blah, blah. And it's just, and when we were kids, we drank from the garden hose. Whatever happened to that? You know, if you're thirsty, get a jug, put some water in it, bring it in. I don't care. You ain't going to die by drinking that water. You may dry some other way, but you're going to do it out of that. We, we survived as kids. And uh, maybe that's what's wrong with me. I don't know. Maybe it, was, it was too much hose water. But... Uh, Thank you very much for subscribing. Please subscribe below. I'll end this stream and see if I actually recorded audio. <laughs> Take care, guys.